We are at the Oliva Strum Cargo Manufacturing Shop, and I am Craig Sigelski, the technology education teacher here at Oliva Strum High School. We are running a real live working business in the high school shop where they do everything that any other business would do um, in every aspect of it, and we strive to continue to improve in all aspects of what we're doing. We had next to no equipment when I started here seven years ago and slowly each year we've built upon that. We're like any other business, you have to start slow, you have to start growing, you have to get in business and we improve every year and we will continue to grow for years to come. This is like a, an alternative school within a school. Some of the students uh, struggle in the academic areas uh, but they excel in cardinal manufacturing and in, in the technical field. I think they probably wouldn't have had that opportunity without Craig Sigelski's program. From the school board level, um, I hear from the community and I hear from other school board members that this has been a very positive impact on the school district of Oliva Strum. This is kind of a win-win. We can The school is getting a higher end program at no extra cost, which the students are getting to learn more, which sends them well prepared on to further education. And then the technical college and universities are getting higher trained students coming in, which is building our workforce and providing the employers with better and well-trained employees. Well, it's a bit different from what the traditional school day is. First thing was he asked for a block period so he could have an extended period of time with those students. And it's it's also about limiting the number of people within this carton manufacturing class. They come in, they have to interview, they have to provide a portfolio, they, and we really take the best of the best from his lower level classes. Well, I started all we have like these exploratories for 30 days and when I came in here for shop, I really liked it. We built a little CO2 car. I just started coming down here during study halls and I just, built my way up. I started just cleaning and sweeping and started building stuff in the wood shop and then started getting into the metal shop a little bit more and then I'd come in here during study hall and he'd kind of guide me the right way on welding and then now I just keep practicing and practicing to get better and better at it. I've always liked working with my hands and then when I came to seventh grade I started in the wood shop I really, really liked it and I thought that in 8th and 9th and 10th grade that I would be able to take more shop classes, which I did and I was hoping to get into cardinal manufacturing for my junior and senior year. started in taking shop classes about 7th, 8th grade. They got my interest. I just always liked machining. I think it's just cool that I can program and tell it what to do and it'll just keep doing it over and over. After I graduate, I'm planning to go to CBTC, Technical College, for machine tool program. Cardinal manufacturing gives kids a very good head start on life. As a father and as a community member, we need citizens. Who are citizens? They are people, young men, women, who not only have skills, but they have the right attitude. They know how to work with their peers. They know how to accept supervision. They know how to learn. So uh, it is much more than just skill development. It's personal development. Well, it's, uh, I think it's a really great trade. I just love doing it. I go to work every day, and it's my hobby. There's just so much stuff to learn. Mr. Stokowski did a great job of teaching us how to manage our time and showing us that everything that we did did have consequences, and they could be good or bad. My main excitement and experience lies behind me with the CNC mill. But one of the best things for me is when I was working on this machine, you had to learn how to draw parts and how the machine would understand that. And then I took that from what I learned into school in one of my classes, we had to do that. We had to draw blueprints and it just made it seem so much easier. It, it isn't just making birdhouses anymore. It's, it's really high tech and uh, these kids that are in that program, they walk around the school with pride. When I think of carnival manufacturing, what first pops into mind is the machine shop and the great people I get to work with and the work ethic that comes out of it. We teach these students in the earlier years so much about the manufacturing and the technology education courses and to bring it all together, their senior, junior and senior year, we run a real life business here where we actually manufacture custom parts for customers all over locally and statewide and even spreading beyond state line. Without credit manufacturing, no equipment, you know, no outside contracting, no concept of, of, of industry and work as part of something as opposed to just going to school and, and uh, putting your time in. 
and, and now putting your time in has meaning. The importance is it gives kids real life experience into working, it gives them relevance into their studies, it brings math, English, science, the other core subjects into relevance, and you're helping out your local community while you're building a workforce for your area. He often gives good person speeches about what it's, what it's like to be a good employee in terms of high moral standards, high ethical standards, being on time, being a team player. The first step was to bring the shop up to speed. We needed new equipment, we needed the, the students to bring their skills up. Nothing could happen to build a business until the shop was at a level to produce quality products, until the students were at a level where they could produce quality products. Then we implemented our business, and then we are still improving each year. The very first year, we could not nearly produce what we can produce now, and five years later from now, we will be producing higher end parts with higher end equipment. And the big challenge is the financial, the money. Um, Craig came in wanting uh, certain equipment and it, it was really uh, pretty cost prohibitive for that program and uh, some of the area businesses, especially uh, MRS Machining out of Augusta, um, started donating some of the equipment that we wanted and, um, and without that partnership we really wouldn't be able to get this going. When I go out to look for industry, I find industry that matches or doesn't even have to match what I'm doing here. I find anybody that's in need of work or wanting to help build the workforce around here, and I go and talk to them. And everybody I've ever talked to has been more than willing to help out any way they possibly can. I like doing what we're doing today and getting these students out of the shop because we come over here and we see similarities to our shop, but we have a Mazak turning center, but they have bigger ones. Theirs have live tooling, theirs have angle drills. They, they see what we're doing compared to what we're doing. We measure with micrometers, we measure with calipers, they measure with CMMs, they measure with surface gauges, they have rock well testers, they have the optical comparators, so we can see the, all the similarities of what we're doing compared to what they're doing to the real world out here. I go to my administration and I explain my plan and my plan is that I want to do a higher end program with more relevance to real life and I want to build a working business within the school and I explain how it costs next to no extra money because we're going to work with our local companies and build a community relationship together and the students will gain this new knowledge and we will be doing it running a real life business. Uh, when he started here he had goals, he had a plan, he had a, a two year plan, a three year plan, a five year plan and he continues to do that. This program can be replicated in any school across the nation. You know, as I see it, there's really no roadblocks that should stand in any school's way to aspire to do a program such as this. Uh, most school districts have the basic components in place for it. Uh, this is just one of, the, one of the many options that a student has to be a leader and to pursue a field that they're interested in.